Hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for tuning in to episode five of the Texas Plinking One Demo Way at 1,000 Yards Long Range Challenge. Uh, episode five is a pretty fun one, pretty cool array of rifles to showcase. So I'm excited to get into it. Now, before we do, real quickly, I wanted to make a quick announcement. For the last few months, I've actually been putting together a newsletter and I'm really excited about it. It's finally up and running. The time I'm filming this right now, I've only sent one email so far. But the reason I started a newsletter is because over the last six and a half years, I've been doing this YouTube thing. I built up a lot of really cool relationships with companies in the industry, and they provide me a bunch of really, really cool deals and stuff like that that I want to promote. And it's meant to send to you guys, but through the big platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, I cannot do that because of their amazing terms and service and all of that good stuff. And so when I thought about it, YouTube really owns all the subscribers. Instagram owns the followers. Facebook owns whatever they call it over there, the likes or whatever. And really, if anything were to ever happen, God forbid, uh, I get plucked of connection through all of you guys. So it took a little while, it's long overdue, but I finally got together the newsletter because of those two things right there. I wanted that home base that you guys are always there so I could update you guys with anything important, as well as in the meantime, give you guys these really, really great deals uh, that I couldn't do otherwise. I know your inbox is very personal and that's why I'm not gonna spam you guys with anything just to make a quick buck. Uh, genuinely, this is me putting together all the emails at most, it's about a once a week basis at the moment, and it's uh, of things that I would wanna receive myself genuinely. So link in the description to join the Texas Plinking newsletter. Now let's go ahead and get on to it. Hey, my name is Brandon, and this is the Texas Plinking 1MOA at 1000 Yards Challenge, a monthly series where I let five fans come out and test their marksmanship. Using their own equipment, the shooter must hit a 10 inch gong at 1000 yards from their prone position without any spotting. If they hit it on their first attempt, they get a gold Texas Plinking Challenge coin indicating their cold bore shot. If they hit it within five shots, they get a silver coin and bronze if they get it within 10. If they succeed, they're given one attempt to hit the five inch gong, which is half MOA for this distance, just for a little extra fun. This episode of the One MOA at 1000 Yards Challenge is presented by the Range Time app. Range Time is a mobile app that allows users to measure their shot targets to get group sizes. The way it works is you plug in a little information to the app, like what caliber you're shooting, distance, and the number of shots. You then take a picture of the shot target with a quarter to get a size reference. The app will then identify the bullet holes and the center of the target automatically. You can manually adjust that if needed. For rifles with optics, the app will even give you the amount of clicks to adjust to get a good zero on your scope. These are features you get with the app for free. However, with a one-time purchase of $10, you get the premium features that allow you to save targets and challenge your friends. Choose a target, text your friend with the code, and your friend can then accept the challenge. You don't need to use the same target because scoring is based off the closest to the aim point with 10 points for bullseye and one point deducted for every inch from the bullseye. I also want to give a massive thanks to Silencer Shop for supporting the channel. Silencer Shop is not only great because of their vast inventory of suppressors to choose from, but also because they help make the legal road much more simplified when obtaining these things. And not only suppressors, but SBS. SS, SBRs, and Pre-86 fully transferables. We're more than happy to answer any of your questions, whether they pertain to a product or legality, as well as help you set up a trust to put all the suppressors under. Personally, I've been using Silencer Shop far before they ever jumped on board as a sponsor, so I'm very happy to have them here. Now, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into episode five of the Long Range Challenge. All right, man, and starting us off, who do we have? My name is Chad Dyke. Chad, thanks for coming out, man. What do you have here? A rifle that does not need int any introduction, the Mosin the Gaunt. How about that? No, when you applied with this one, I'm like, let's go. I love showing a, lo a little bit different, different caliber options, factory, out of box. Haven't done something quite like a Mosin the Gaunt yet. So, how long have you had this? Uh, this is actually my first uh, rifle that I bought when I was 18. Oh, right on, man, okay. And I've, every time I've seen people that bring out their rifles, yep. uh, they always bring in their, uh, high dollar bench you know precision rest like yeah. the best of the best basically yeah so i figured i'd send you an email and see what this sucker can do <laughs> right on dude i love it uh you equipped it with some modern glass so what do you have down here or up here uh on the uh, this rail here that replaces the rear side this is a bad ace tactical i do not remember which uh the brand what brand this uh scope mount yeah. is uh, but the, the scope is an SWFA fixed 10X. And so remind everyone at home, Mosin I got with that chambered in? Uh, seven six by 54R. All right, and speaking of that ammo, what do you, uh, any brand or anything like that would a? Uh... Uh, seller and below, okay. uh, 140, yeah. 147, or no, 174 match ammo. Okay, cool. Something I, believe... I asked you off camera though, you have shot this at 1,000. Yes, sir. All right, so this isn't new. Is this the second time shooting at 1,000 with this? Uh, this will be the fourth. The fourth, okay, cool. And you said that you've done it in like 
tough conditions as far as the wind, but it was all within like the frame of the target and all that. Yes, sir. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to have to ask you, man. Confidence level, 10 shots on a 10 inch target. What oh, the first it's... one. Oh, first one. You're going to call me one shot, Larry. Oh, one shot, Larry. One shot, <laughs> no. Larry with the Mosin. <laughs> no, as long as I, if I'm able to put lead on target, I'll be very happy. Within any of the shots. Very yes, cool, sir. man. Awesome. Well, I'd love for it to happen with the Mosin to got, man. So let's get it done. All righty, sir. Um, you have a preference of those three targets of the same size. You uh, want to go for one over the other? I'm being nice. I'm giving people the choice now. <laughs> we'll do the, the the white all the way to the right. Perfect. We're good whenever you are. Yes. Yes. Nice. Nice. That was six, right? Yep. The Mosin, baby. We were right on. <laughs> All right, you want to go for the uh, half of them away? Yeah. How about that? That's awesome. All right, then uh, you want to go for the uh, white one? Uh, let's do the orange. Okay. Ah, uh, not too bad. That's pretty good, man. All right, and up next, man, who do we have? Hi, Brandon, I'm Jeff. Jeff, thanks for coming out, man. All right. What do you got here? I got a Ruger Precision and 6.5 Creedmoor. Very cool. Pretty much stock, except for the uh, extended mag release and the Anarchy Outdoor uh, throw handle and the bolt. Okay, very cool. A nice bipod too, what is that? Uh, Accutech, I think. Very cool. Uh, the RPR in 6.5 Creedmoor, that's actually what got me into precision uh, shooting. Awesome. Oh yeah, I think I got content on it from like four or five years ago and the channel was like just a, just got started. And this rifle, I bought without knowing anything about long range mm -hmm. shooting. And so I learned off of it and then I got into that crazy custom world and all that stuff. But it was a great, great shooter. Awesome. Um, and then uh, what do you have for glass? Uh, I got the Arkin EP5. I uh, stumbled on another re reviewer that just was nuts for him. Oh yeah. And then I saw you did a review yep. on him and I couldn't be more happy with yeah. the performance from no, what you get. Really, really good, especially when you get that whole combo with that mm -hmm. uh with that scope base and all that stuff. 20 M away and like that mount alone is like 59.99 or something crazy like that. But I've found them to be great glass for the money as well. So this whole setup as it goes really 
isn't, you know, people think in the long range world, it gets uber, uber expensive, but this is a fairly um, attainable, realistic setup for a lot of people. Less than two grand. Yeah, and it shoots real well, as I know. So, <laughs> yeah. very cool. And you said 6.5 Creedmoor? Yes. Cool, what ammo are you shooting? I'm shooting hand loads. Hand loads, okay. Yeah, my own load. It's a 140 grain Nosler. Okay. Uh, hollow point very with cool. uh, 40 grains of 43.50. Okay, very cool. So you guys uh, all know how it works now. 10 mm -hmm. shots, 10 inch target. What's your confidence level looking like? You want to call uh, a shot? I'll be happy to hit it, but I better hit it in three. In three? In all three. right, all right. Yeah. I'm with you though. Happy to hit it, especially with what I'm using today. Oh my goodness, but cool. All right, man, well, let's get it done. All right, cool. You want to go for uh, any target in particular? I'll go for the one on the right. Uh, that white one on the right? Yeah, the white Perfect. one on the right. Did you hear steel? Yeah. What happened there? Ricochet. Was that a hit? Well, hold on. Um, Time out. I thought I saw some dirt fly off just to the. Like, yeah. It's hard to say. I heard steel. But I heard, I heard steel and yeah, it was just off. He saw the orange one. Uh, no, because I thought. Uh, we got discussion. All right. Um, I thought I saw a little bit of. Uh, Dirt. I thought he missed just like an inch to the left. Yeah. yeah and then I, and heard, I heard steel. Yeah. But I heard steel. Well, on further review, the shooter did not shoot the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Game clock resumed to two minutes, 15 seconds. Replay, replay fourth shot. All right. So you're going to be on shot number four now. Still going for the one on the right. That, uh, that was orange. yeah, that was a nick on the orange. On the orange? Yep. yep. yep that's orange. the orange. Consider that a, a spot.
man. Well, hopefully we're wrong. So we'll yeah, see you when, uh, when I get home. And up next, man, who do we have? Dustin Williamson. Dustin, thanks for coming out, man. What do you have here? I uh, got a 260. It's an Alamo Precision G2 oh. Action. Very cool, uh, okay. Bart line, 18 inch barrel. Very cool. I had Alamo build me a couple guns and I love them, but this is just a APR G2 action that I haven't experienced. So that's yeah. super cool. How are you liking it? I uh, love it. Awesome. What stock is it in? It's a Manners T2A. Very cool. Looks good, man. Thank you. Yeah, I love that carbon fiber. What's the barrel length on this? 18. 18, very cool. Look nice and condensed. Yes, sir. Awesome. What are you running for glass? Uh, it's a Bushnell Elite DMR. Oh, okay, very cool. You said it's 260? Yes, sir. What, uh, what ammo are you running? Uh, running hand loads. Okay. Um, 140 grain Hornady ELDs. Very cool, man. Well, looks like a capable setup. I like it too. What's this, the Badger Ordnance uh, night device yeah, on the, here too? Yeah, the Badger top rail. Very cool. I don't have any night vision, but maybe one day. One day. In the meantime, it looks <laughs> ready to go for it, man. Thank you. Really, really cool. All right, so confidence level, 10 shots on a 10-inch plate. How do you, uh, how do you think it's going to go? I, I feel good, um, but I'll be happy to hit it. Happy to hit it all? Yeah. I'm with you. Well, looking forward to seeing it shoot, man. All right, sir, when you're ready, you want to go for that same target we've all been going for so far, the uh, white target on the right? Yes, sir. Perfect. Sounds good.
Nope. Ten. Nope. One of those like snuck just under or something. Yeah, yeah. that's one. Up next, who do we have? This is Paxton Howe from Paxton. Alashville, Florida. Awesome. Hey, thanks so much for coming out. Real quick, before we even get into the rifle, got to mention to the viewers, had a little oopsie. Um, this is why I need a bulletin list before I come out here. I forgot everyone's coins. Um, and so, for the people who hit, I'm just going to ship them out. Uh, so, but the reason I mentioned that with you is you're so nice, without even knowing that, to bring this out for myself and all the other shooters, yeah. whether they hit it or not, which is yeah. very nice of yeah. you. See, I only give people things when they hit. Yeah. So, uh, man, what, what do you have here? So yeah, I have just some custom keychains that I make. Just I usually give them away as gifts or you know family members, friends. Yeah. And so uh, just something I was gonna do for the other shooters I got to shoot with today and hand them out. Um, but I have hearing that we lot you know forgot some coins. Oops. I said hey maybe I'll offer them to you earlier. I was gonna awesome. wait till the end, but yeah hopefully. Well we can that's use them. awesome. They'll, they'll definitely love that, um, and I know I do as well. So really really appreciate that. I'll show people the shots there. So at least they get something today, and then they'll just get a coin a little bit later. Okay. Hopefully you're among the ones that get a coin as well. Yep. Uh, and if you do, it'll be with this setup. So what do you have here? So yeah, this is a, my Daniel Defense Delta Five. Um, it's oh, their cool. their entry into the bolt action world. Yeah. I think it's been about three years, maybe four years since they've uh, introduced it. This is a bone stock rifle. So this is as it comes out of the box. I mean, obviously without the hardware. Yep. But um, it's a 20 inch, uh, one in 10 twist, 308 on top. I have a Vortex Razor, uh, six by 36 Very Gen nice. three. And then it's all propped up on a Magpul bipod. Awesome, yep. love it. You said it's a 20 inch barrel. 20 inch cool. barrel. And I'm sorry, what caliber? It's a 308. 308, yep. and uh, what ammo are you shooting? I'm shooting some factory, or sorry, I'm shooting some reloads. Okay. Um, my dad passed in 2014, but um, he got me a, he got me started in reload in 2012. Oh really? Okay. And so I'm hoping that you know to make something special out of being able to hit a thousand yard uh, target. I've only ever shot out to 850, so I don't oh, have right? dope for a thousand. So gotcha. Um, yep. Oh man, I'm rooting for it. Let's uh, let's hope you get some uh, shots and shots early as well. With that said, uh, you got uh, out to 850. Good confidence with it. Yeah. So I'm okay. confident. Confident I'll hit it within 10. I'm okay. gonna target five. Gotcha. But I'm hoping for that first shot magic. Of course. Every, everyone's of course. looking for it, yep. I know, I'm part of it. Uh, it probably won't happen today for me because of what I got going on, but it's okay. Uh, no, awesome. The Delta Fives, I haven't shot one. I've only heard, though, so much about it, of that being it's one of the most accurate out-of-box rifles. Yeah. It, I heard that people are just stacking quarter-to-half MOA groups yeah. all the time. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing it shoot. I heard so much about this paired up with great glass and uh, I think it's uh, things gonna be fun to watch. So let's get it done. All right, when you're ready, if you wanna go for the uh, same white one to the right. Yep, sounds good.
those were some annoyingly close shots there. All right, and up next, who do we have? Dion. Dion. Dion, thanks, Dion Boats, yes. Thanks so much for coming out. You got quite a setup here. Um, what Thank do you, you have? So this is the uh, Accuracy International multi-caliber. Okay. Uh, with Atlas bipod, and I've got the Schmidt & Bender PM2. As Very you can cool. see, 5 to 25 by 56. Great glass, great rifle. So it's uh, stock standard. You know, yep. I don't, uh, uh, there's no need to alter anything. Uh, no. It's a great rifle. And you said you've had some experience in the past as a 308, but some multi-caliber designing recently, somewhat recently yes. for the 65? Yeah, so uh, about three weeks ago, I changed the barrel from a 308 to a 6.5. Yep. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's a wonderful Liking caliber. It. I love it. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, and as I said to you off camera as well, I don't know what it is about this challenge, but it always brings the uh, AI rifles, the actually internationals, and I love it. So very cool. Um, that said, 6.5 Creedmoor, what kind of ammo are you shooting? So I'm using the Burger VLD Hunter. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, they, uh, these are hand-loaded rounds uh, that I bought from, uh, I can't remember, Choice Ammunition. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, not a plug for them, but uh, that's where I got it. Um, and they're running at about, uh, when I chewed the rifle, at uh, 29.30. Oh, 29.30. They, they are lightning fast. What barrel length do you have? 22-inch. Uh, 22-inch. One, one and eight twist. That's some velocity. That's plenty. That is yeah. plenty. Perfect. Right. Well, you got 10 shots to hit a 10-inch plate. What's the confidence level looking like? You know, um, I'd like to think that I uh, will do it in the first three. Uh, it's a beautiful day out. It is. You know, it just depends on the the guy behind the, the rifle on the day. So I we'll see. Yeah. Perfect, well looking forward to it. I'll go for the orange. Okay, you know. orange is good. There it goes. What was that, five? Yep, five. Five, awesome. Nice. And which of the half MOA targets do you want to go for? Yeah, so let's just have a look. I'll go for the white one. White one, all right. Yep. Thank you. All right, guys, and you heard me say in the other interviews uh, how I'm a little doubtful with my setup, and if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm gonna be uh, using a Mark 12 Mod O clone. Uh, I say clone because it is uh, a PRI built Mod O. Uh, so that being said, I'll walk you guys through it. I made videos with this in the past, actually just uh, late last month, so if you guys wanna check that out. But at its core, it is an AR-15, but the Mark 12 is an accurized version of that. That was kind of uh, militarized in the early 2000s. So PRI, Precision Reflex, uh, built the upper. It's an 18 inch uh, Douglas one and seven twist barrel, chambered in 5.56, Allen Engineering AEM5 suppressor. Um, and then it's just a standard lower receiver, no thrills there with the A2 stock and grip. 
hair swivel bipod, and then not a really clone correct optic by any means, but I thought it looked cool. This is a first generation Viper PST. So yeah, Gen 1, it's a two and a half to 10 uh, by 32, I believe, but it does have side parallax. Looking forward to that. As far as ammo, like I said, chambered 5.56. Uh, I've tried to shoot it with Black Hills and it groups just over an inch, oddly enough. IMI Razor Core 77 grain is what I'll be using today. And that's consistently about one inch for me, sometimes a little less, five shot groups at 100. That being said, full transparency, I did try to get a little bit of home field advantage on the time I shot the video with my buddy, the Mark 12 video from last month. I did come out here, take a couple pop shots at a thousand yards and can not confirm it's gonna be a tough day. So with that said, I'm not gonna give you guys a shot call out. I have 10 shots to hit a 10 inch plate and really I'm gonna give you guys a percentage. It's probably about a 40% chance I hit it. Um, maybe 50, maybe 50. Starting to get the winds to kick up. I'll be the last shooter, so. Uh, yeah, you know what? Enough talking about it. Let's just see what happens. I'm gonna go for the white one to the right. I know it's lying to me right now. It seems like there's no wind. Yeah, yeah there's none down there. <gasps> Man, okay. Here we go. Here we go. All right. I did not see anything. I'm going to assume it's a wind thing for now. Oh, I know. I'm going to assume it's left. Y'all can laugh if I'm wrong. That's all I'm wrong. All right. Ten X is not showing me anything, man. Oh, there you are. Nothing. Wow. Edit it. Throw a rock at it. Yeah, I know. I got it. Yeah, that was 10. Well, it proved to be a tough day for many, but you got it done with, uh, I would guess, probably the most, uh, I don't know, 
under not underappreciated, but the one that we would count on least yeah. <laughs> got it done on what's number six. Yes, sir. Awesome. And like I said earlier, I'm gonna have to mail you in the uh, the coin, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. That'll be a bronze coin. How'd it go for you? It's a little bit difficult at, be, at the beginning because the elevation difference from here to, from back home is about 1500. Oh yeah, around there. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So I was hitting really high, and I got. I think I got lucky on that second shot where I could see it on the berm, and then I yep. put my uh, reticle back on the target there, and they just kind of dialed it back how many hashes the yep. were far apart. Yep. But uh, honestly, I wouldn't recommend this in rifle for anybody because you're taking a big risk every time you buy these off the shelves. Oh, sure. Because God knows how many rounds have been shot sure. through the tube and how bad the rifling is. Yeah. But So all that considered, I mean, there was really no shots that – threw you off, right? And nothing threw us off. Everything was like kind of moving accordingly and yeah. got an impact on the six. And then when you went for the half him away, I mean, you were within that vicinity as well. So there's nothing odd about it. We've seen modern custom guns do worse, yeah. far worse. Which I'm getting points, uh, three quarter MOA with this thing. Really? So that half MOA, really? it's, it's gonna deal luck because that, that's that distance, it's like seven well, and sure. a half inches. Of course. Yeah, no, well, you got it done. I love that the uh, the Mosin did it, dude. I, I know the viewers are going to love that, too. <laughs> so, dude, thanks for coming out. Uh, and, yeah, no, just really appreciate it. Well, good shooting. Thanks for the opportunity. All right, man, and your take, uh, how'd it go? Well, you know what they say about excuses. Yeah, true. I'm going to be full of them in just a little bit here. They'll be ready for it. <laughs> yeah. um, man, that was an interesting one because on the third one, I thought you missed by a couple inches at most to the left. Then I heard steel, and I thought that was interesting. So we try to go back and review through the drone, which is at this point going to have the best angle just because it was the closest. Right. And uh, so really not officially, officially until I get home will we see, but apparently they thought they saw the orange target shimmy when we're going for the one on the right. Yeah. So as for now, we'll chalk it up as a miss, and hopefully I'm wrong when I really blow it up on my computer. And then, of course, you'll, you'll know, and they'll know by now as well. Uh, otherwise, I might be seeing the replay now. But in any case, they were all within the frame. There's nothing super wacko. Um, it's just odd winds pushing everything left yeah. today. In any case, uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun shooting off camera as well here yes. for a while to yes, make the trip will. all worthwhile. No, I'm uh, glad I came out. No, thanks so much, and uh, and it'll be fun. We'll do show and tell with everything, and everyone's Definitely. gonna have some fun. In cool. any case, thanks so much for coming uh, out. Really appreciate it. All right, and what was your take of the challenge? Uh, it was a good time. It was fun. Uh, didn't get it done today, but. Uh, had a good time anyway. Well, that's good, man. Yeah, and like I said before, to make everyone's trip worthwhile, we're gonna shoot for fun off camera as we always do. We can't just come in here and do a 10 shot challenge and leave. Uh, so we're, we'll have some fun, set up some shades certainly today. But uh, odd day, man, we were just talking about it off camera a little bit. It was just wind constantly changing, feels like zero here. Tells you it's zero there, but it's definitely not zero. It's all about repeatability. And if the wind's not doing its part, but that's a hard thing to read as it turns out. Uh, but nonetheless, man, it is a sweet rifle. Thank um, you. And I'm sure we're gonna see it perform real well. Uh, once we just shoot around but uh yeah thanks again man for coming out yeah thanks for having me yeah absolutely all right and what was your take of the challenge it was definitely a challenge it was today certainly yeah. man uh if i recall here the first shot i don't know if you had spotted it but uh matt on the spotting scope and me behind the camera we didn't see it second shot i didn't see it matt did you were just a bit left yep so same problem i had and that's just an odd thing because here we feel pretty low wind mm -hmm. if any down there I've, as, as i've been saying wind flag doesn't really tell you much but it's been pushing right to left pretty good yeah um, and so you were able to get it back in, uh, but just uh, ends up being a small target. Yeah, first shot I didn't see, second mm -hmm. shot I, I, I want to say I lifted up just in case I was in a bad patch or something. I did see the second splash oh, and, did. and made, okay. the, made, made the adjustments. That's good. Um, but yeah, I thought of everything I was going to say when I hit it, but I didn't think of anything to say when you know, missing the target. Yeah, no, I hear that. I'm sure it's a fantastic shooter, as we'll see here, just shooting around yeah. for fun. In any case, thank you so much yeah, for coming I had a out, man. I had a blast, Brandon. Well, yes, hopefully absolutely. we get you back here yes, soon, sir. especially on a cooler day. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah that'll be it's nice. not too, too terrible, but yes, it's definitely hot. Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks again, man. Yep, thank you, Brandon. And another AI making everyone look like it's amateur hour uh, <laughs> in comparison. Well done. Uh, what was it done in number five, correct? Number five. With all the others being just right on it, sneaking just around it. Yep. And then, of course, the hit on the half MOA, oh, yes. which is just beautiful. That, that just proves sweet. you can just move from once it's dialed, it's a repeater. Absolutely. So how'd it go in, in your perspective? I think it went great, well, obviously. I, I loved it. Um, you know, when I even if I look at it now, uh, I did a wind call. I did several wind calls, yeah, and even looking downrange. Um, there's wind down there. And my first shot was off by one and a half to two. Uh, I'm shooting in mills. And uh, I adjusted and even that. Um, so that's why number five, my elevation was perfect. Um, no, it was, it was fantastic. Look, I would love to have uh, um, taken the gold coin off of today. Um, 
But you know, even if I have to go buy more rifles to come back, we'll uh, do that. I'm going to come and get a gold coin. Perfect. Very I, soon. I'd love to have yeah. you back, certainly. Yeah. Um, that being said, you said you got some wind calls. On a day like today, and I've mentioned it plenty of times, you're probably getting sick of me. The way the target's positioned, the wind flag won't tell you much down there because it's mm -hmm. hidden. What were you doing? Reading Mirage or what was your Yeah, best so I was bet? looking for Mirage um, and then I was looking at the adjacent, as you can see, there's a nice channel up here. I yep. looked at the adjacent uh, vegetation, uh, even the grass. Uh, there's no movement on the grass. Mm -hmm. You know, we uh, got a slight elevation uh, or there's a lower point over here and there's nothing to tell me that there's a, a we'll call it a two mil wind uh, from right Which to is left. substantial. That's substantial. You know, and the way I measured it as well, I mean, um, and it's uh, it's not a completely perpendicular wind. I mean, this thing was coming from uh, probably the four o'clock position, mm -hmm. um, which makes it um, a little more deceiving. And uh, I, I didn't call it right. Yeah, no, it was tough. But then again, that also shows that gold coin, I haven't handed one out yet, but <laughs> if you get it, it could be a factor of luck in there too, to be able to miss and get it on there and then repeat the uh, one MOA and half MOA shows. You dial it in. And, uh, and it uh, takes a, quite the shooter to do that. So congrats on that. Great rifle, great person behind it, certainly. Hey, just, um, you know, I, so I went a few times in the weeks leading up to this to practice my cold ball sure. shots. Yeah. So I practiced with a 338 and this. And um, look, it's not easy, but um, I was well prepared. I've got the rifle system for it on the day uh, as we stand here now. I mean, there's a gusting wind, which will make a massive difference down there. Absolutely. Right yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's been fantastic. But no, it's a fantastic setup, and I love to see it uh, perform in someone with the hands of uh, someone who knows what they're doing. So, thank you. Congratulations. I wish I had the coin at this moment. No but problem. We'll get it in your hands here very soon, <laughs> I promise. No problem. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, guys, I'm only half joking. I won't hit you guys with too many excuses. I knew one of these days I wouldn't be able to complete the challenge, and so I figured I'd be best to lean into it and do it with a real, real challenge. So, this is the second Mark 12 to attempt it. My good buddy Dylan tried with his mod. Uh, one, so I thought I'd give it a go with my mod O. I think he had better success than me as far as groupings concerned, but I won't know until I get home. Hopefully, I can see every single one of them. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I'll, I'll kind of lean on here is 10 shots fired. I didn't see many of them, and yeah, full disclosure, uh, I don't mind. I have no shame in telling y'all I tried this challenge before to get the home field advantage when I shot the video from last month. So we were ma mainly shooting, you know, 900 yards and in or 950 yards and in. But before we left, I said, let me give a couple jabs real quick to a thousand to get ready for this challenge. And I had much better success off camera. After 20 rounds totaled, I did hit one. So that would have made it a 50% uh, success rate as far as the challenges are concerned, 10 shots each, which made me think I had about a 40 to 50% chance of getting it done today. Even those misses on that day off camera were well within the vicinity. Differences I was shooting in the evening where the sun wasn't beating down on that berm. So what I underestimated was the difficulty of seeing the impacts uh, of a 5.56 five, on the berm when it's well lit up like this. So maybe you guys see better than me at this current moment because I haven't gone back and looked at the footage. But uh, yeah, with this 10 power scope, it's a toughie. Very, very tough um, to see any impact. The ones I did see when they were starting to get pretty close to the target, I held that much a bit higher to the right and then I saw nothing again. So pretty hard to, uh, to make any correction from not seeing anything. So that's what I'll lean on. Nonetheless, it's a 77 grain 5.56 five, flying at a thousand with some odd winds. So I'm not beating myself up over it, but nonetheless, it goes down on the record, four and one. So we got a loss on there, had to happen. Hope you guys don't judge me too hard, uh, but it is what it is. Still having a good time. We'll get uh, some shooting done with it off camera with the group. What a great group that was, guys. Um, man, I really appreciate you guys watching. This is episode five. I don't know what I want to use for uh, episode six. Maybe leave some comments down below, see what I got to bring out, uh, and we'll, we'll make it happen. But uh, nonetheless, that does it for episode five. Once again, a big thanks to Range Time for sponsoring this video, as well as Sponsor Shop. Again, link in the description to join the Texas Lincoln newsletter to be up to date with video releases before they get publicly released, the best deals on guns, ammo, all that good stuff, and overall updates that I think should be worth your while. Again, sign up down with the link in the description. That does it. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys next time.